third part of this video, we'll explore correlation, interpretations of model coefficients, the coefficient and determination, and using the model to make predictions. But first off, let's go back to the previous video, or the slide from the previous video, when we talked about where these numbers are even coming from. Well, fortunately, we won't have to calculate this by hand. We can use computers. Um, but just so you know where the computer is getting these numbers from, it's all about this uh, residual or sample error term, which is the difference between y and y hat. The point of regression, or least squares regression, is to find the line where the average error is zero and the sum of the squares is minimized. So the sum of squares being minimized is where that whole least squares uh, name comes from. Um, the formulas to calculate this by hand um, really only require algebra or arithmetic, but it's very complicated and it takes a very long time. So nobody really would do this by hand, except as an academic exercise. So we're going to use computers to do this, and, fortun and fortunately, many computer programs do have this feature. That every statistical software does. Um, even a TI-83 and 84 calculator can estimate this line for you, and Excel can as well. So um, this is a pretty typical printout that you would see from a statistical software package. Even Excel's uh, printouts look similar. This was generated using um, the statistical software StatCrunch. Um, I did edit this slightly, so if you did this in StatCrunch, it might look slightly different. Um, I just deleted like the first few rows so it would fit on the slide, but it's very similar. Um, and it's similar to the output of any statistical software package. Um, if you want to see what it would look like in Minitab or SAS or SPSS or some other uh, common software packages, um, your book actually has several examples of output. So looking at this table, it can seem overwhelming at first. Remember, this whole point was to simplify things, not to make it more complicated. Um, however, we're only going to need to look at a few of the numbers for now. The first number is uh, the number next to intercept. Um, in some statistical uh, software packages, they call this constant instead. And so instead of intercept, they'll say constant here. Um, this number is 38.86, etc. in the sample. And that's going to be our estimate for our y-intercept, or just our beta naught hat. So for our data, um, beta naught hat is approximately 39. To interpret this value, we call that the y-intercept is the value of y when x is 0. For our example, we can say that we estimate the annual salary to be approximately $39,000 for a professor that has zero years of experience. Now, um, just as a warning here, it's not always possible to interpret the y-intercept practically. For example, going back to the silly example of predicting shoe size, if we wanted to predict the shoe size of a person based on height, the y-intercept would be the shoe size of a person who was, well, x equals zero, so has a height of zero inches or zero inches tall. This is not only out of the range of whatever data set we'd use to model this and making predictions out of the range of the data that you have are known to be unreliable. It is also nonsensical. Um, since you can't, how can you predict the height of a person who's zero inches tall? That person wouldn't even exist. Um, there is a saying, um, not in statistics, just in life, that uh, the saying is GIGO, G-I-G-O, garbage in, garbage out. In other words, if we try to predict y when x is 0, but the input value of 0 makes no sense, then our prediction will not make much sense either. However, for our data set of salaries and experience, 0 makes sense and is in the range of the data, since not only um, is it possible, to have a newly hired professor with no prior experience, we actually have two such professors in our sample. After all, we have to, we have to start somewhere, right? So um, our stat, um, on the stat crunch output, we see that the uh, estimate of the slope is uh, 1.49555, well, sorry, 55, et cetera. Um, so this means that we can approximate beta 1 hat um, the slope of our regression line to be approximately 1.5. The slope is the amount the predicted value of y increases for each additional unit increase in x. Um, I'm saying increase here because our slope is positive. If um, the first increase, um, we would always say x is increasing, but as far as y increasing, I'm saying increase because the slope is positive. If the slope was negative, we would replace that first increase with decrease. So we would say, generically, that we estimate 
um, y to decrease by whatever that slope is uh, for every one unit increase in x. So for our example, um, we, est we can say that we estimate the annual salary will increase by $1.5,000 for every additional year of experience. <clears throat> Next, we'll explore a similar concept um, to slope called correlation. Correlation is the linear relationship between two variables. A common measure of correlation is called the Pearson correlation coefficient. Um, this number is always between negative 1 and 1 inclusive. It could be negative 1 or it could be 1 if the relationship is perfectly linear. If r is close to 0, then there's almost no linear relationship between x and y. And if r is close to 1, there's a strong positive linear uh, relationship between the two. And if r is close to negative 1, there's a strong negative linear relationship between the two. Um, these are arbitrary cutoff values, but we need to say something. So um, we'll say that if the R value is between 0.3 and 0.8, or negative 0.3 and negative 0.8, if the R value is negative, um, we say this relationship is moderate. So there would be a moderate linear relationship between X and Y. So to demonstrate this, let's look at some graphs. Um, in this first graph, um, it shows a moderate positive linear relationship between X and Y. So R might have a value of something like 0.6 or so. In the second graph, we see that X and Y do not seem related to each other at all. If we were to calculate the correlation coefficient, it would be very close to zero. In the second graph, um, in the second row, we see the dots fall almost perfectly in a straight line. Not perfectly, but almost perfectly. R in this example would probably be, well, definitely be negative, but maybe about negative 0.99 or somewhere around there. Um, the graph at the very bottom shows a moderate quadratic relationship between X and Y. Um, however, the linear relationship would have to be zero. Um, since if we were to, if we were to try to model this with a straight line, it would have to be a horizontal line. It might be upward sloping in the first half and downward sloping in the second half, but if we can't use two different lines, one line, we will just use the average value of y. So this is why it is so important um, to mention that r only measures the linear relationship between two variables, because even though we see here that x and y do have a moderate relationship to each other, they have no linear relationship to each other. So we have to mention the word linear because r being zero by itself doesn't tell us very much. It only tells us it's not a linear relationship. This is also why it's really important um, to start off a statistical analysis by doing some graphs and to investigate the type of model that should be built. Not all regression printouts have a correlation coefficient listed. So if you use a different software package, it might not show these numbers at the top. However, every statistical software package can do this. You just might have to go into a separate screen. Um, warning about Excel. Excel always reports the R value as positive, even if it should be negative. However, we know that um, if the slope is positive, R is positive, and if the slope is negative, R should be negative. So since they always should match, um, we can always double check to make sure R really is positive or not based on the slope. Um, so in our example, we see the correlation coefficient at the top here, and it's positive 0.92, and we knew it had to be positive because our slope was positive. Our R value is approximately 0.9213 due to rounding. So since the R value is close to 1, a positive 1, we know that there's a strong positive linear relationship between X and Y. X and Y in our example is salary and experience. There's a lot of things to look at with regression because it is a very powerful and adaptable technique, way more than we can cover in one week of an introductory course. However, if you are interested, these are some things that will be explored in the second level statistics class on this page some measures of practical usefulness, statistical usefulness, and different assumptions that should be checked when using this technique. Um, for now, we'll just focus on one of the measures of practical usefulness. Um, in other words, how much better is using this model over just not using any model at all? And that measure is called the coefficient of determination, or R squared. It's not a coincidence 
that we just saw two r's in a row, they are indeed related to each other. The coefficient of determination, r squared, is equal to the square of the correlation coefficient r. r squared is given on the table on the right. We don't need the numbers at the bottom of the page, but if we wanted to, we could calculate r squared using them by taking a ratio of the sum of squares in the model over the sum of squares total. Um, more practically, we can look at it this way as far as what's going on. If, they were, if, if we were to use the average value of y to make predictions instead of using regression, we would use the techniques from earlier in the course to analyze it. One of those measures is variance. So in other words, um, squaring a whole bunch of errors and dividing by the sample size minus one. A regression model has a variance as well, calculated by squaring errors, but this time about the predicted value of y. R squared is defined to be the total variance in y that's eliminated. So how much of these errors are eliminated by doing this um, over the original errors? So it's a ratio. Since it is a ratio, it can be converted to a percentage. Um, and it should always be between 0% and 100%. In our model, R squared is approximately 0.849 or 84.9% which is very good for such a simple model analyzing salary data. In fact, if this was a real data set, R square probably would have been closer to 50%, since we expect a lot of the variance in salary to remain even after accounting for years of experience, since different professors will have different degrees, abilities, titles, research backgrounds, etc. We can practically interpret, though, um, this 84.9% this way. We can say 84.9% of the sample variation or variance in salary can be explained by using experience in a, little, in a linear model. More generically, you would say that R squared converted to a percentage of the sample variation in Y can be explained by using X in a linear model. Lastly, we can use the model to make predictions. We make predictions by plugging in an x value into our equation and evaluating the value of y. We technically already did this um, when we um, interpreted the y-intercept. As you saw, um, you can only make predictions when the x value you're plugging in not only makes sense, but is between the minimum and maximum values of your sample, inclusive. In our example, y hat is 39 plus 1.5x. If we want to know the predicted salary of someone with 20 years experience, we would plug in 20 for x. And we would uh, so plug in 20, 1.5 times 20 plus 39 would give you 69. We can interpret this as we estimate salary to be $69,000 for a professor with 20 years experience. More generically, we'd say this is our estimate of y um, to be whatever that number is when x is whatever you plugged in.